Well, one of the most famous tributes to David Bowie when he was still alive came nearly three years ago from the International Space Station and Commander Chris Hadfield with his own version of Bowie's A Space Odyssey. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. And I'm pleased to say he joins us now on the phone. Commander Hadfield, thank you for talking to us. What are your thoughts today? Oh, Karen, I was so sad this morning to, to wake up to, to that being the first piece of news I read uh, when I looked at what had happened overnight. And, and to have uh, celebrated his creativity his whole life, basically the, the whole span of my adult life, I've been listening to David Bowie, so, so it's kind of an irretrievable loss. And so, it, yeah, it saddens me. I'm just delighted that, uh, that I got to be a little, little part of everything that he's done. You tweeted something that many people have been moved by. Uh, ashes to ashes, dust to stardust, your brilliance inspired us all. Goodbye, Starman. How did he inspire you? You know, I, he recently had a, a traveling exhibit that, that went all around the world, and uh, I'm from Toronto. I was in Toronto, and I'd always uh, had an inkling of his creativity and his originality, but it was only when I walked through that exhibit, uh, right from when he was uh, a young teenager, right through his whole life, the, the fearlessness of his creativity and the, the uh, relentless uh, desire to create and, and, to, and to invent and to, to reanalyze things. And evidenced right up until just this, this last couple of weeks with the release of his last album. And, and just coincidentally, over the holidays, I watched... Uh, Lazarus, which is one of the songs off the album, and it, he know he knew he was he was uh, dying, and yet that song is both poignant and artistic, and yet it's also so creative and so original and, and thought inspiring. So I just I have great respect for him and uh, and all the things that he did, and, and the more the more you turn over, the more you see just just what a deep person he was. Then came this incredible fusion of his. A space odyssey and your real experience on the International Space Station. Why did you make that video? Uh, initially, uh, I, I wouldn't have, but there, with the social media, there, there was a clamoring all around the world when people uh, heard that there was a musician recording up on the space station to, to make a version of that song. And but, uh, it's pretty audacious, really. He, he's such an original force to think that, that you could cover it. But I thought, well, I'm here, this is unusual, this is new, and, and I'll at least do a vocal cover. But when I took that, that song that he wrote back before we walked on the moon, he wrote Space Oddity in 68, uh, when I sang it and listened to my voice, it, it kind of surprised me. It, it's as if somehow he had recognized what it was going to be like. And he, he uh, his words... I don't know, somehow sort of transcended a little bit. I could, I could almost feel what he'd been thinking just, just when I sang it in that place. And it really brought home the necessity to me then to, to do my best to try and cover it, make a video of it. And the response around the world has been amazing. Even the response from Bowie was, was delightful also. Yeah, absolutely. He called it possibly the most poignant version of the song ever created. Uh, Commander Chris Hadfield, thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you. It was delightful to talk to you, Karen.